Hey guys, welcome back. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, this is a great time to do that. I am back with another video on the topic of image annotation. And this probably would be the last one as part of this series because there are many, many, many out there, but the philosophy is very similar to at least one of the ones that I uh, have showed in the past or the one that I'm going to show you right now. And this one is uh, one of my favorites, I would say, LabKit because it is a plugin as part of ImageJ and I'm pretty sure many of you are familiar with what ImageJ is and probably already using it. If not, you should be. If you are into image analysis, image processing, then this is an amazing piece of free software that I hope you can download and explore. Okay, I am going to show you exactly where you can get your ImageJ. I'm gonna show you how you can get your hands on to LabKit or install this LabKit uh, plugin, and then how you can actually use it to label your images and download them for your uh, machine learning purposes. It may sound like a long process, but it is pretty quick. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And I want to start by showing you how you can get your hands on to ImageJ. It's called ImageJ, but I usually download the Fiji version of ImageJ and Fiji as I think they'll say it somewhere here. Uh, it's it's uh, Fiji stands for Fiji is uh, just ImageJ or something. So it stands for uh, Fiji is just ImageJ. So then why is it called Fiji? Because it comes with a whole bunch of pre-packaged uh, uh, commonly used plugins, so it makes your life easy. So go ahead and download ImageJ or Fiji, it doesn't matter. Eventually what you'll end up with is a uh, an executable that you can execute in your Windows system or Mac or, uh, or Linux. And when you fire it up, when you open it, it looks something like this. This is it, this is your ImageJ. And if you have downloaded it from the ImageJ site, when you go to plugins, you may not see all of these plugins, maybe a subset of these, but if you download it from Fiji, then it comes with a whole bunch of plugins and explore them, very, very useful. So our goal is to get this lab kit as part of our plugins right here. So how do you do that? So first thing first, let me remove the background here so it makes it easy for you to focus, okay? So let's go to uh, help and update. And if this is the first time you're updating, it may actually update a whole bunch of stuff. So it makes sure that you are up to date. I kind of do this occasionally, like at least once a week. So I am up to date and I, apparently my system, my image is up to date. So nothing to update there, but at the bottom you see manage update sites. This may not, this screen may not show up if there are actual updates to your uh, ImageJ. So go ahead and do that process and fire up ImageJ again, and then do the process again. So once you see this screen, go down to manage update sites. And when you hit this update, update, it's going to look for these update sites and download whatever plugins are available as part of that update site. So our goal right now is to scroll down to L and find your lab kit, check that box and just go uh, add update site, uh, close, and then go ahead and apply the updates, that's it. And once you do that, you should, as part of plugins, if I scroll all the way down, you should see lab kit down here. And I can say open current image with lab kit, but I don't have any image right here. So let us go ahead and start by loading an image. So let us, I'm going to leave these two web URL links as part of the description, so please go ahead and look at it down, uh, down in the description part. So let's go ahead and open our image, the same image that I've used in the last tutorial. So let's go ahead and open it, and this is the image I would like to annotate. So how do we get the process started? Plugins, lab kit, open current image with lab kit. So it's going to open that plugin, You'll see that in a second, and there you go. I'll digitally zoom in so you can focus on this without all the clutter in the background. So this is the interface that we're going to work with. Okay, now what? It by default starts with the background and foreground. In this case, you can basically, uh, let's say, change the name to, I don't know, I'll call this positive because I'm going to paint the brown, brown nuclei right there. So let me call that positive. And the other one can be background uh, by default. You can add many, many labels, multi-labels. It's pretty straightforward. So go ahead and do that. 
and now I'm going to select positive and start drawing. That's it. It's as simple as that, but the story doesn't end there. You can make it even better. So let's go ahead and start by annotating a few of these. Let me zoom in. And this is the pen draw button uh, right there. And let's leave the brush size to, I don't know, three right there and go ahead and paint the pixels. You can change the colors and all that cool stuff as usual and go ahead and paint these if you want you can increase this to a little bit okay seven pixels that's too big <laughs> let's go back to five okay let's add a couple more annotations for our brown pixels let's add this one you got the point i think but i'm doing this deliberately to add a few more for a good reason you'll see why in a minute okay so let's do this Okay, now let me define some background regions. So I'm going to go to background and increase the size. And all of these blue nuclei is my background. I do not want them to be included. If you want, you can add another class and add the blue nuclei as another class. But in this case, I only want two. So I am just drawing around. Uh, all these regions and it's also important to draw the boundaries between these uh, so it can get the you know so so your so your machine learning learns from these regions it's very important so let's go ahead and add a few pixels right here and how much can you do this right i mean if you are patient enough you can go ahead and draw every one of these uh, brown spots right here and uh, uh, and export it but the reason one of the reasons I like this interface is now I have a tool down here for segmentation and it uses let me click on that it's a la, uh, it's a segmentation and when I click on the settings part right there let me bring it back into the screen so uh, use GPU acceleration go ahead and check it if you have GPU I do have GPU Nvidia on this system and it requires CLIJ2 I haven't uh, done anything with that I haven't installed that so let me uncheck that and right, go ahead and read the documentation if you want to accelerate your segmentation using GPU and I am going to go the I mean this is traditional machine learning if you watched my previous videos if you're a regular viewer my videos in the numbers 80s I believe like 84 85 one of those videos I talked about using traditional machine learning for image segmentation how did we do that we extracted features a whole bunch of features and we applied random forest classifier to segment our image this is exactly what that is here these are all the features what features do you want to use like gaussian and laplacian you can add more filters if you want this is feature extraction based on this it's going to apply random forest and then segment these images so let's say okay i'm okay with these default filters uh, features for now so let's say okay and the key is now let's go ahead and click on this arrow right there and it is training the image based on the few labels that I just provided and then segments this image. Well, I started the discussion by talking about uh, image labeling, but why am I talking about training? Well, I'm trying to use traditional machine learning to speed up my annotation process. That's the key here. But the traditional machine learning is not good at segmenting these type of complex images. Of course, it's not going to do a great job only with these few labels. This is where I get a good start. Now I need to make sure I go back and correct for any mistakes. One thing, you can go ahead and erase your labels, but I am going to add more labels and train it in an iterative way. So let me turn this segmentation off. You see how it's actually thinking all of these medium gray as uh, or medium brown as uh, uh, my positive, but I want to define that as background. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add more, uh, I'm going to add more training regions where it is actually failing. So it should be there and let me turn my segmentation on all of these regions. It's thinking it is it is uh, positive and the key lies in these areas define the boundaries very well define the boundaries well and let's do a couple more so you get an idea of what i'm trying to do right there so i'm defining all of these boundary areas 
and where else did it get wrong it got wrong at many many places you see how it got wrong right there but this time it should do a better job because we provided additional training uh, additional training regions so let's go ahead and hit this training again so it's an iterative process do this two three times until you are like 95 percent there and then do the corrections at the end so now it's doing an over segmentation right here if you don't like this process don't do it just go ahead and go export selected labels as bitmap you're done you paint every pixel, you do your, you know, uh, and uh, uh, go to export and go ahead and export, you're done right there. But I'm trying to make sure I am, it, this, this process works much better on certain images than others. I mean, this one is a complex one where traditional machine learning fails anyway. This is why you need deep learning. But if you have like some simpler images, this may actually work much better. So let's go ahead and do one more area and then investigate this and then uh, stop right there. So what can I do here? So this is when I have to decide whether this is a nuclei or not, if it is background. I mean, I'm going to do that and uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to add a few more of these regions and you can add a few more positives also. If you think some of the positives are not being uh, you know, uh, classified correctly, go ahead and add the positive pixels. Let's do this one more time. Okay, I'm happy. Let's go ahead and hit the train process. The first time the training is a bit slow probably. Uh, the subsequent times it should be a bit better, faster. Okay, so there you go. This is how it looks like, and you do this in an iterative way. I think you got uh, you got the idea. And once you are done with this, what to do? And if you just go ahead and do labeling, export selected labels as bitmap, it's going to export only the labels that I have done as bitmap, right? Maybe that's what you want. But in this case, I'm going to show you obviously how you can use the segmentation as a tool in generating your mask, which we just did. And let's say I'm happy with this. I'm not, but let's say I'm happy with this. I want to export this as a mask. So you just go to segmentation, create a label from segmentation. So it's going to create a label. And for which class do I want to create? Obviously not for background, but for positive, uh, this class, the brown uh, nuclei class. So it's going to create now the, the, the mask right here. So let's turn everything off. Let's turn the positive off. In fact, let's remove the positive. I'm, I'm not interested in that anymore. Uh, you can remove background if you want, but now you can see how I have this class. You can further edit this if you want. If you don't like this, let me click on background and uh, let's actually click on the segmented eraser tool. Go ahead and erase certain regions. Yeah, this is probably a much better way uh, if you can turn on and off, okay, that looks okay. And you see all of that, I can erase it. If you don't want, you can increase the brush size all the way, go crazy and erase certain areas. I don't want any of these regions, yeah? So it's a combination of automated plus manual. So now let's say, okay, I'm good. Let's go ahead and explore, uh, export this. All I need to do is uh, select whatever. So right in this case, I'm selecting my segmented labeling export selected label as bitmap. Let's go back to our desktop, uh, lab kit, and let's just dump it here, my mask, yeah, and save. And I selected TIFF format, so it, it's, it's saving this in uh, TIFF. So if I go back, we should t mask.tiff. And how does it look? Again, let's kill the previous images right there and open this in my image J and that's how it looks. This is another common question I get. Hey, I did my all my labeling. I did my segmentation. My images look black. Yeah, of course they look black because uh, in this case, it probably assigned a pixel value of zero and one. And when you use a Windows uh, program or any program to open your image, it's going to show the entire range of zero to 255. So you need to adjust the brightness contrast to see exactly where your uh, pixels are. So let's go to, uh, let's go to image. Where is it? Adjust brightness contrast. And now let me just set it to zero to one. And when you do that, there you go. You should see all the uh, labeled regions and you can see the background is zero. These pixels have a value of one. You can see because it shows it up here 
as part of uh, image J. So keep an eye right there. You see value one, value two uh, in the background. So this is how you can uh, use a semi-automated way to create your own uh, your own uh, masks for uh, deep learning purposes. I hope you found this to be useful. And uh, if you have much better tools for image annotation, for semantic segmentation, or even for object uh, segmentation, whether it is mask or CNN or something, just go ahead and leave that in the comments section so others can benefit from it. And also do not forget to join our Discord server where we can have some discussions in terms of what are the best methods to, for example, for, seg uh, for segmentation, for labeling and so on. I'll also leave the link to my Discord server as part of the description so you guys can go ahead and join that. Thank you guys and uh, let's meet in the next video with a different topic. Thanks.